So I think we really have to talk about uh, Jim. Uh, Jim Murphy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk <laughs> about Kevin. <laughs> 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 we need to talk Jim, about Jim. Uh, Mr. Murphy is actually really an extraordinary character, actually. I mean, I, I personally believe he's slightly unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean that in a real sense. If you actually observe him, yeah. and he's running a high risk strategy mm -hmm. at the moment, and he, as Len says, he'll do anything, say anything. He has John McTernan behind him. Yeah. The dark forces are, are there, yeah. and they're capable of almost anything. Yeah. Because this is the, he is the establishment man. He's the last line of defence, and he will he will garner support from all quarters, not just from uh, the, the, the remnants of the Scottish Labour Party. He he will get support from London. He will get support from all corners because he's the man, and he he, he is running a very strange uh, strategy. And I think he, he's capable of anything, and he, he might be trying to do something like build his own fiefdom here and sacrifice the British Labour Party. And there's a great irony in that, actually. You know, we, we wonder about him, what he's doing. But you know, there, there is a great, there's a great opportunity developing, because the more he cuts the ties fr uh, from the British Labour Party, the more he creates this sense of independence within mm -hmm. the, the, the Scottish Labour Party, the Labour Party becomes available to the Yes movement. You know, there really is a big question, actually. Why did we run in the wrong direction? Why did we run to join the SNP and, you know, 60,000 members when there is only maybe 4,000 members, active members, in the Labour Party as we speak? I mean, that's how many left. It. And they are, they are careerists, they are people who are there for all sorts of reasons. There, is no, there are no foot soldiers. The Labour Party's empty. It's moribund. It's moribund in numbers. It's moribund in, in philosophy. And Jerry Hassan was right when he said recently, you know, he, the high-risk strategy that uh, uh, Murphy's carrying out is, you know, it's just, it's so crazy. But there is no, no attempt to build a, a, a new philosophy in the Labour Party. The Labour Party is, is there for everybody. It doesn't belong to Murphy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not Murphy's party. I mean, it's the People's Party, as he used to say. So why did, you know, if even 30,000 of those members who joined the SNP, if they'd have joined the Labour Party, the Labour Party wouldn't be doing what it's doing now. Mm -hmm. The Labour Party would be following a pro-independence route. You know, maybe, maybe we've missed the opportunity, we've missed the bus. But uh, we, we have to look at, we, we really have to think about what, what he's capable of doing. And he might win through, you know. So just as we're saying with the issue of the prisons, you know, he'll say anything, do anything. He'll support things that he never, ever believed in before, you know. He is a Blairite, but he, he's actually using the term socialism. He, he's, he's using it all the time. He's saying it and saying it because he doesn't believe in it. He's never believed in it. Uh, he's got a very dubious past. He's a professional politician, so we have to be, you know, we have to talk about him, and we have to be really careful what he's up to, especially with John McTernan at his side. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I agree with everything you've just said, but I would like to postulate that maybe his eye is not on Scotland as a prize. I think he's after Ed Miliband's seat, mm -hmm. and we are, we will be completely expendable. He's using us to build up his own character. Uh, to get him into Post position within the Labour Party yeah. so that he's good for the night of the long nights and then we'll have Jim Murphy as master of the universe. <laughs> but we must remember <laughs> Jim Murphy is the, the, the most equal country, the most fairest country in the galaxy. Personally, I'd like to ask you, why have you not done it sooner? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. let's go on with the... I don't like the man. <laughs> <laughs> We, we can also see that that line, the line that was going to be trotted out, and as Jean so rightly said about that literally, and has been predicted as soon as he got the job, that the, the, the front pages of the newspapers are wetting themselves. Anything he says, anything will be Jim Murphy, Jim Murphy, the promotion of him as a prospective leader, all of the, those sort of things to save everything, to save their jobs and everything will be there. But, but I, I, I do think we have to really look at what he what he stands for and examine that and also the fact that 
uh, in some way for me, I mean, I, I don't like the man either, but that line does resonate with many people in Scotland of, if you vote SNP, you let the Tories in. Mm. Yeah. Our line should be, you are the Tories. And what he's trying to do is uh, disassociate by using socialist all the time, by using those terms. And I saw a very interesting piece about the guy who's uh, been running Putin's campaign and everything like that, that the way of politics now, and we can see it with David Cameron, and we can see it with the Tories is, you speak in a liberal, um, we want to save the health service, blah, 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 all of these things, you say all of that in your messaging, but in actual fact, you do the opposite. Mm -hmm. they, but the Tories presently have carried Thatcherism further than they have ever in the yeah. past, mm -hmm. and but what they are saying ameliorates. What they are saying seems very soft, and of course he's got a disabled child who was treated by the health service, and they use all of that, and that is exactly what Putin has been doing in Russia as well, and in many ways what the right in America have been doing as well. You speak in a liberal way, but you act in the most right-wing way. And that is exactly what McTernan has got Jim Murphy doing here now. And he's been working for Jim Murphy for yeah. eight months now. Yeah. He's not just got the yeah. job as being yeah. a man. So yeah. I just want to say a, a couple of other things, because I, I, <coughs> I agree with a lot of what Bob has said. Um, and, I, and I am not personally sure at this point um, whether... You know, Jim Murphy is creating a, a fiefdom and wants to create a fiefdom in Scotland um, so that he can kind of rule the roost in Scotland or whether it has got some grand plan to, uh, to use that as a stepping stone to, you know, UK greatness. What I do know is that he probably doesn't know the answer to that at the minute either <laughs> because, because he is utterly ambitious yes. and opportunistic and he will read the runes depending on how it goes in the run-up to and through the general election. And whatever it, he thinks at this point is his ambition in all of this, he will be perfectly willing to change it, shift it and manoeuvre it in order to ensure that he comes out. Jim Murphy was someone who would never, ever, ever have said that he would want to be the leader of the Labour Party in Scotland. Ever. And yet... Here yeah, he is, yes, yes. right? So he spots the moment, he spots the opportunity, and in he jumps, and he does not care about the consequences. And in employing John McTernan, he has employed someone in his own likeness, because that is what John McTernan is like. A man with a track record that shouldn't get him a job, right, doing anything, frankly. <laughs> it's a track record of failure, but he has had a capacity to leave just at the point before shit the happens. Collapse. <laughs> right? And so he moves on and on and on. He is a master of the black arts mm -hmm. of manipulation, spin and opportunistic spotting of weaknesses in order to create the kind of media and perception that a small thing is actually a major thing and we're all going to hell in a handcart and only Labour or John McTernan can save us. And that takes me back to my point about the media. You see, the thing that struck me about the media in their um, total desire to ensure that they punted Jim Murphy, they wanted him to be elected the leader and all the rest of it, two things kept going through my head. You want that because he's a man. Mm -hmm. Because that takes you back into your comfort zone as journalists, most of whom, most political and journalists in Scotland are men. Um, and if we want to look at where we've had um, reasonable coverage, there are one or two of the few women political journalists that we would see consistently, right, are the ones who do that more often. But most political journalists are men. The idea of a male leader of Labour in Scotland Labour Party yeah, was hugely comforting to them. <laughs> and my point much earlier about we mustn't allow everything now you know, that whole politics has changed and Scotland has changed to be uh, diminished and dismissed by some kind of sucking back in to a debate that is only about the political parties and what the political parties think. Because that's how the media wants to frame it, because that's what they're comfortable with. So that challenge to that is also in our hands to, to push that one as well. And they absolutely hated 
that, that, that media and information was being disseminated in other ways. Mm -hmm. They absolutely mm -hmm. hated the lack of control and they hated mm -hmm. the personalities that were coming through. From, from a performer's point of view, from an actor's point of view, what, what, you, what you recognize, what I recognize in, in leaders particularly, is bad acting. Right. <laughs> um, the, the, there are many actors within within the show, show business, and this is a relevant point I'm making here. That there are many actors who the actors that other actors like are the ones where you never see the joy. You never see the work they've done to get there, and they make it look effortless. That they've walked on there and they've done it. Thatcher was a terrible actress. But she actually was a good B-movie actress. I always thought she was the Susan Hayward for the older members of, you know, that melodramatic, sort of over-the-top sort of actress. And it worked. It resonated with a certain part of the population. You know who's a brilliant actor? Tony Blair. When I watched Tony Blair do the comic strip thing, I'm not bothered with um, Catherine Tate, I suddenly went, oh my God, he's a great actor. And I realised why he had got to where he's got. He's actually brilliant at what he does. Jim Murphy is one of the worst actors I have ever seen. Yeah, and that's my, my thing is not about his personality. He might be very nice to chat to and Mr. Affable and all that. But actually, there, absolutely in there, is a really bad actor. And what you see is the join. And when yeah. you see the join, and I think a lot of people are not convinced, not because they don't like him individually, but the acting is really bad. And that is where he looks slightly unhinged. He's performing. <laughs> and it's very interesting. I know of a private conversation that happened with him and someone else, I'll not name, on the night of, the, of our defeat in the BBC studios at four o'clock in the morning, when a friend of mine said to him, what would you have done? What would you have done if Yes had won? And his reply was, it was over. Everything was over. So that's how much he wants this not to be over. He will do anything and say anything because they know how close they came. And the admission is they will at four o'clock in the morning over a cup of tea, a politician knackered will tell you things that they would never say on air. But that's what we are dealing with here. We are dealing with that and we have to be very, very aware that that message is disseminated and, and in the way that Jean has talked about, that we go into our communities, our kitchen tableware pals, and we, we get onto those media sites and make sure that that message is not got through because it's a very powerful one. Mm -hmm. When someone will literally <coughs> has come that close to death, they are out there, you know, fighting for their lives.